All right, here with Brad Feld, uh, Techstar in his own right, co-founder of Techstar, author of, co-author of Venture Deals uh, with Jason Mendelson. Brad, I'm just curious. Uh, I'm a big fan of guerrilla marketing tactics in general because I think that's that separates the men from the boys, the girls from the women when it comes to being an entrepreneur because it's really hard to learn how to be a great guerrilla marketer. I think it's an innate talent. I'm just wondering over your career, have you seen or have you pulled off any um, you know, really remarkable guerrilla marketing stunts? Yeah, I, I would say my whole universe is probably categorized as guerrilla marketing at this point. I'm for a long time. Um, uh, I had a line which was, "Whenever I hear the word marketing, it makes me throw up a little in my mouth." <laughs> and um, uh, at some point, I recently I got a post, uh, I got an email from uh, Chris Moody, who's the CEO of a company called Ganip, and I'm an investor in here in Boulder. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Chris sent me a note saying. Hey Brad, you know I think you're doing you know your 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 universe a disservice, uh, you know in terms of how you think about marketing. Uh, he said nice words about how good I am at, at at marketing Foundry Group and the stuff we do and the companies we're involved in. And he then got went on a rant and described how, from his frame of reference, the type of marketing is really thought leadership marketing, which in my mind is actually quite equivalent to guerrilla marketing. It's 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 a flavor of it. It's it's sort of direct, authentic, non-packaged, um, creative uh, around a particular set of ideas. And and I I asked Chris if I could repost that. I reposted it literally on my blog, ad, unedited. Uh, and there were a number of people who responded very positively to it. But it was another example of this sort of notion. If you look at um, many of the companies we invest in. Sure, they have traditional marketing and Marcom activities, mm-hmm. but most of their uh, growth and momentum comes from delighting their users. And I have really shifted my mindset in terms of how companies should and how entrepreneurs, frankly, should focus on their products. And my view is they should focus on building amazing, amazing products, right. period. And If you have amazing products, the marketing of those products is trivial. If you have shitty products, the marketing is impossible. And so instead of focusing on marketing as an activity that sort of is separate from product, my view is integrated into product. And, you know, I don't care whether you call it guerrilla marketing. I don't care whether you call it viral marketing. I don't care whether you call it thought leadership marketing. I don't care whether you call it something else. When the entrepreneurs are obsessed with the product Mm -hmm. and the company has organized all of their activities around that and build from there, it's very powerful. And there's lots of examples. So so you ask for specific examples. Um, uh, I'll give a few. One of them, we have a company here called Trotta that we're investors in. Here is Boulder. I'm sitting in Boulder today. And Trotta is growing extremely fast. Um, A couple-year-old company. They'll break 100 people probably by the end of this year. Um, we're investors with Google Ventures, and they do crowdsource search engine marketing. So um, in, basically, if you're a website and you want to do any, any kind of website owner and you want to do SEM, um, you know, your, your primary approach to doing SEM right now is to hire an agency or hire an individual to do it and try to figure out how to do it and what landing yep. pages and what keywords and all that crap. Mm-hmm. And what they do is they just simply create a crowdsource approach. They create a bunch of optimizers who were qualified optimizers. They went through the, you know, Google Ad uh, AdWords training, and you know, there's sort of certain certification level that they have to have, so they're actually of quality. Mm-hmm. And then marketers basically or websites say, "Here's what I want to do. Here's here's my website. Optimize me, yeah. and um, uh, uh, and market me." And it, the marketplace just happens. And the, 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 the people on the on, on Trotta side of the equation, the optimizers, uh, end up getting a cut of whatever the uplift in performance is. Nice. So, so you know, what Trotta has done to do that was, uh, and, and to get the word out, was a bunch of things where they educated people on how SEM works on both sides of the equation. And then were incredibly um, uh, inclusive. So, they, so the founder, Neil Robertson, created something called, called Crowdsortium. And he reached out and invited anybody else that was working on crowdsourcing type businesses to be part of Crowdsortium. And that amplified sort of the crowdsourcing phenomenon. Yep. And then within Boulder, they took part of their office and they turned it into code space. And so they basically said, anybody who's a developer, uh, come hang out here at Trotta and we'll give you coffee and we'll give you food and we'll give you a, a desk and internet. 
and you can just plant here because we have this extra space. We don't need it yet. Mm, cool. right? so sort of sort of building through that. And of course, some of those people were optimizers who got involved in the company. Right. You know, I mean, you sure. see where you go. So it's it's really it's having a personality and, you know, tie into that. Think about crowdsourcing as thought leadership. Think about things like code space as uh, uh, guerrilla marketing, because now people are talking about this great company, Trata, that, that's providing free space for developers, which, by the way, they're desperate for. So. I think that kind of mix is so much more powerful than, you know, the launched press release with yep. planted articles in all of whatever media, including the tech blogs. And in Trotta's case, it's because they were totally obsessed on the product. Yep. Well, yeah, I, I, I remember there was one VC firm that came up with a music video that was really hilarious. <laughs> and it uh, it uh, was actually garnered a lot of attention, including, I think, the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, um, I think it was Foundry Group. I'm not sure. We're a good example from Foundry Group of that, too, which is we, we get regularly asked and have been regularly asked, you know, who's our PR firm? Who does our marketing? <laughs> um, you know, what kind of budget do we have for promotion? Uh, I mean, we've never done a press release. We don't. We write yep. blogs. We do music videos. We show up. We engage with with people. We try to respond to everything. We love our product. Yeah. And you know, we're very, we're very focused on, you know, the, the, the users of our product, which are entrepreneurs. And we make sure that, you know, our, we, we translate into being very obsessed about our entrepreneurs product. So, yep. um, I think, you know, that's, that's sort of guerrilla marketing at its finest in some regard at, in a professional firm, right? I mean, it'd be very easy to have, uh, I mean, an image consultant should t- would tell me never, you know, do an interview right after you get out of the shower over Skype, <laughs> your hair is going to be flat and, <laughs> You know, it's messy and you don't you know you should have shaved this morning like, oh, fuck that you know right. like, I'm who I am and if you don't like me that's okay now, there's right. plenty of people out there in the world go play with them and if, <laughs> if you like me let's play that's that's totally true I remember with go to my PC and go to meeting you know I got to be the point of the arrow on a lot of because I was biz dev and I was sales and I was out there a lot and people would say who is your firm who's your PR firm you guys are everywhere and I had this running joke I would say because it was a woman right that worked for us she was awesome and her name was Laura McCormick and I would say oh well, we we use Laura McCormick and they would write it down <laughs> are they out of New York and I'm like no she's at Santa Barbara with us <laughs> that's awesome perfect. Yeah, Walt Mossberg wrote about I mean, everybody wrote about us, but it's because we were authentic, we were genuine, we loved our product, and it happened to be a pretty good product. I mean, I mean, those are the right words, right? Uh, you know, it, it, it becomes, uh, every word sort of takes on its own arc, and authenticity is one of them. Right. You know, and, and then it becomes, well, you know, to, the, the marketing playbook from the PR firms is be authentic. You know, yeah, it's like, yeah. come on. Like, I'm with like, you. Just, just be you. And, and a company has a personality, have the personality, and, you know, make sure that that personality fits the product, but that, that personality is, is of the founders. It, it can't be manufactured, and it shouldn't be. And, you know, if, if you start to try to manufacture it, it becomes be laborious, painful, stiff, uninteresting, and you can be a multi-thousand person company and still have a personality. Yep, yep. And, you know, the things that get so... Um, so tiresome to watch is, you know, 20, 30, 50 person startups that try so hard, you know, to we're the market leader in blah. Well, if you're the market leader, why does anybody know who you are? Right. <laughs> you know, and, and if you have to tell me the, you're the market leader, are you really the market leader? Yeah. Like, you know, it's 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 more of the don't tell me what you are. Just be it and show me. And, you know, don't tell me. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm totally with you. Those are great thoughts, Brad. Thanks so much. I appreciate it um, and look forward to chatting with you again. Anytime. Take care, Brad.